Hello aviators I welcome you on board flight of Captain Vijay where I teach you things which as a pilot you should know All of you must have seen fast moving fighter jets in your life in Hollywood movies generating high g turns and demonstrating their ability to turn fast and turn tight Combat fighter aeroplanes which can turn fast and can turn within a small radius will have an edge in aerial combat but can only fast moving fighter jets generate fast rate of turn with small radius you will be surprised to know the answer when you calculate the values yourself using the formula so today we will fly through the topic of radius of turn and rate of turn by the end of this video you will be able to calculate these values yourself and apply the same in your day to day flying so fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off radius of turn radius of turn is the radius of circle in air which the flight path of an aircraft would make if it is turned through 360 degrees but even if you turn through smaller angles the flight path would be an arc of a circle with the same radius as if it has turned through 360 degrees let us study some aerodynamics to calculate the radius of turn in a straight and level flight lift balances the weight of aircraft and thrust balances the drag an aeroplane does not turn using rudder or by yawing it turns by banking to the side of the turn banking tilts the lift vector towards center of the turn and a component of lift provides the centripetal force which is essential for all objects to remain in circular motion in a turn if bank angle is theta horizontal component of lift l sin theta will provide centripetal force notice that originally lift was balancing weight and now l cos theta is balancing weight so to balance aircraft weight in a turn we must increase the value of lift this is done by increasing the angle of attack by increasing the backward pressure on flight controls if you do not apply the backward pressure the aircraft will descend a component of lift that is l sin theta provides centripetal force and l cos theta balances the weight so l sin theta is centripetal force which is mass into acceleration that is mv square by r l cos theta equals weight which is mass into gravity which is mg so tan theta becomes v square upon rg and from this we get the radius of turn formula as r equals v square upon g tan theta if we apply this formula for different scenarios we get to know that if you double the speed for the same bank radius becomes 4 times and if you reduce the speed to half the radius is 4 times lesser for the same speed if you increase the bank angle the radius reduces so low speed and high bank will give small radius of turn but remember as the bank angle increases the stalling speed also increases and progressively you have to keep increasing the speed so as to keep turning without stalling radius of turn is independent of aircraft weight so if you can maintain the same speed and same bank weight will have no effect on turn radius radius of turn is least at sea level for a given indicated air speed since as you go high the value of v which is tas keeps increasing for the same indicated air speed at 40000 feet tas is double of ias so for the same ias radius of turn at 40000 feet will be four times of that at sea level the last one is most interesting whether you are flying a cessna 152 boeing 737 or a rafal fighter jet if the speed and bank is same the radius of turn will be same so the type of aeroplane has got no role to play in calculation of radius of turn it is just your speed which is in tas and the bank angle so for practice let us calculate the radius of turn for a cessna 152 flying at 90 knots at 4000 feet above mean sea level and turning with bank angle of 45 degree remember the v here is tas and not the ias so first we have to convert ias to tas using the formula as shown on the screen so for 90 knots of indicated speed at 4000 feet above mean sea level we get tas of 96 knots now since the value of g in the formula is in meter per second square we need to convert the tas into kilometer per hour followed by meter per second 
so we get tas of 180 km per hour which is equivalent to 50 meter per second of speed putting these values into the formula now rounding of the values of g to 10 meter per second square and the value of tan 45 being 1 we get the radius of turn to be 250 meters so a cessna 152 at 90 knots at 4000 feet msl turning with 45 degree bank will be able to turn with a radius of 250 meters now let's move on to the next topic which is rate of turn as the name suggests rate of turn is the number of degrees an aeroplane can turn in unit time and generally it is expressed in degrees per second so if your aeroplane can turn around from 360 north direction to 180 south in 18 seconds then the rate of turn would be 10 degree per second logically a higher rate of turn would be one of the most demanding criteria for fighter jets so that it can out maneuver an adversary in combat for commercial and training aeroplanes the rate of turn will decide the time required to change your direction and most of the time the atc expects commercial aeroplanes to maintain rate one turn rate one turn means 3 degree per second rate of turn that means it will take 1 minute to turn through 180 degrees first let's find out the formula for rate of turn then we'll work out how can we maintain rate one turn at different speeds the formula for rate of turn is vyr so how did we get this formula well if aeroplane is turning in a circular path of radius r with speed v which is tas it has to travel the perimeter 2 pi r to cover 2 pi radians of angle time taken to complete 2 pi r distance with speed v will be 2 pi r upon v so it is covering 2 pi radians in time 2 pi r upon v so the rate of turn is 2 pi divided by 2 pi r upon v and we get the answer v by r and this will be in radians per second this formula can be misleading sometimes so what we do that we replace the value of r here from the formula for the radius of turn r equals v square upon g tan theta then we get the rate of turn formula as g tan theta upon v where theta is angle of bank and v is tas the answer we will always get in radians per second if you multiply the answer with 57.3 you will get the rate of turn in degree per second as i am i'm sure you would be knowing that one radian is equal to 57.3 degrees so analysis of rate of turn formula reveals that the rate of turn depends on speed which is tas and angle of bank lower the speed and higher the bank higher is the rate of turn rate of turn is also independent of aircraft weight if you double the speed at the same bank angle the rate of turn will become half of original value at the same indicated air speed at 40000 feet the rate of turn will be half of that at sea level since the tas is double of indicated air speed rate of turn as well as the radius of turn will remain same for for all aeroplanes if the speed and bank angle is same So now let's calculate the rate of turn for Cessna 152 flying at 90 knots at 4000 feet above mean sea level turning with bank angle of 45 degree. Remember V here is tas and not the IS so first we have to convert IS to tas using the formula as shown on the screen. So we get a tas of 96 knots. Now since the value of g in the formula is in meter per second square we need to convert the tas into kilometer per hour followed by meter per second so we get tas of 180 kilometer per hour and converted to meter per second it comes out to be 50 meter per second now to calculate rate of turn we can use either of the formula either v upon r or g tan theta upon v let's use v by r So using this formula for the given condition the answer comes out to be 0.2 radians per second and if we multiply this with 57.3 we get the answer of 11.46 degree per second so 
at 90 knots of uh, indicated speed at 4000 feet above mean sea level with bank angle of 45 degree you would be turning with a rate of 11.46 degree per second another example we need to work out is the bank required to maintain rate one turn rate one means three degree per second which is equivalent to 0 0.52 radians per second and now let's put the values in the formula and we get the answer rounded off to 15 degree so 15 degree of bank at 90 knots of indicated speed at 4000 feet above mean sea level will give you rate one turn so remember bank required to maintain rate one is for a given speed that is TAS and you will require more bank to re maintain rate one if your speed increases or if you fly at higher altitude since at higher altitude for the same IS the TAS will be higher now you can correlate that why different outbound radials are given in the gypsum approach plates for different category of aeroplanes this is to cater for larger radius of turn required to turn from outbound to inbound course for aeroplanes flying at higher speeds some aeroplanes are even equipped with a separate instrument altogether having rate of turn pointer depicting the rate of turn but in shape it looks like a bank pointer so hope this video has helped you in understanding the topic of radius of turn and rate of turn this knowledge you will be able to apply in day to day flying and also make calculations with a scientific calculator for practice so with this we have arrived at our destination subscribe the channel for more such informative videos on aviation do not forget to comment below about how did you like the video or if you want me to cover a specific topic hope to see you on board again for the next flight and till then happy landings